Um, so I'm very excited to do today's topic because um, I'm going to drive into using a particular tool and giving you really actionable steps. I've watched some training recently, just kind of browse through to see what people are doing and, and maybe how can I improve my training by observing others. And it goes right back to the core thing that we've been doing for over 250 training videos in a row is trying to drive right to the tactical step. And that's what I'm going to uh, be doing with you. In this training, I want to teach you how to find opportunities that are expiring. Done right, you'll find slam dunk opportunities that have a higher likelihood of you winning. Um, so they won't keep slipping to the right, right? These opportunities, when they're expiring, they have a higher likelihood of getting funding. And that funding means they're not going to slip to the right. Newer opportunities have the chance of slipping to the right. And so this is one of the reasons I really like um, finding expiring opportunities. In uh, today's training, I'm going to cover three main lessons that I, that I want to teach you here. One is how to use FPDS to find unqualified opportunities. A lot of unqualified opportunities in your space, right? You just haven't qualified them yet. Second thing is I want to help you analyze those opportunities to be able to quickly find ones that are worth pursuing to fill your pipeline. And then the third thing is how you can perform initial capture steps to qualify and then pursue those opportunities, right? I'm not going to talk about the life cycle of capture activities, but really how do you get started with these opportunities once you find them? How do you start moving forward? That's what I'm going to cover in that third main point. Um, do me a favor, in the chat, put skill time in the comments if you're willing to make the time to learn and hone the skills that lead to more success. So put skill time into the chat. Let me know you're along for the ride. And Larry, you're getting ahead. I might, I might be saying slam dunk later, but uh, but that's perfect. I love that you put slam dunk in there. That's perfect. Um, I like driving it forward. If you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to my daily live federal sales training, where we teach tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years as a small business owner in the federal market, and since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting it is not a secret; it's just a process. And I really believe at my core that if you know and follow a process, you're going to achieve the success that you want. That's what I want for you. And I'm sure that's what you want for yourself is to be able to achieve that success. Before we get started, do me a favor, help buyers remember who you are, help others in the community and me remember who you are. If you haven't done so already, put into the chat your core competency, two or three words, along with your company name. Make it easy for us to remember uh, who you are, your company and what you do. Right, that goes back to what I said early on, knowing that slam dunk opportunity. Um, also, engage in the community. Right, if you haven't um, done so already, reach out to people. You should be connecting with one new person a day at the very least. Say, hey, I saw you in Neil's training. I'd love to just have a 15 minute intro call. Don't even bother having calls that are longer than 15 minutes because if you schedule it for 30 or 60, you will talk for that long. But a 15 minute intro call is perfect. And then you can say, hey, let's have a follow up call and let's have another call. Right. So um, just go ahead and drive forward on quick little meetings and, and make a point of engaging others in the community. That's a huge advantage of this training is that you have this networking opportunity in the chat. Uh, finally, some of you have already done this, but do me a favor, put your city and state into the chat. Let me know where you're coming from. Since the GovCon Chamber of Commerce started, uh, we've supported members from Guam to the U.S. Virgin Islands and every state in between. And I'd just like to know where you're coming from. Um, it's exciting to know who we're helping out there and who's engaging with us. OK, so uh, we got a fire hose of training to go into, and I'm going to use this one slide and I'll let you see it. But really, at the moment, it's a reminder for me of the agenda I want to go through. But let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this slide as I go through and let me pull up this guy. So occasionally I'm gonna be going through, but um, what I'm gonna to cover today is the getting results, analyzing the results and then pursuing the opportunities. And so uh, I'm gonna move forward from very basic tips all the way to advanced tips. So stick with me and the skills that I'll be talking to you about get farther and more and more advanced. And so the first thing I just wanna to talk to you about is how do I come into the Federal Procurement Data System, FPDS, and search for data in a way that I can find stuff. Um, I have a couple of customers who have just graduated out of our workshop. And as a little thank you, uh, we're gonna send them some of this data I'm gonna show you, but we wanna send them a, 
a, a handful of good opportunities that they can start pursuing that maybe they hadn't looked at before. And so I'm going to use their, uh, their core competencies as an example. So when I come into FPDS, this is the landing page. You've got this easy search Google type bar, and I just type in a keyword. I'm a massive fan of keyword search. That's what I try to um, use. I don't really uh, focus too much on PCS or NAICS codes because you kind of then go down and look at keywords anyways, and not often will people put the right, uh, well, let me rephrase that. More often than not, people will put the wrong code in there or a code that doesn't make sense to you, but it makes sense to them. But keywords generally can't be misinterpreted. So putting in SharePoint as an example. So when I come back, one of the first things I see when I'm doing results like this is that I'm getting companies that have the word SharePoint in it. And while that might be interesting, that's not what I'm looking for. So I want to filter down the results. And the first tip I want to teach you here is just how to use the tool to, to further filter down the results you get. So I'm clicking on this advanced button. And when I do, I have more options. You need to go through and learn this tool, right? Practice the tool. But I'm going to move forward at a fairly good pace, but I'll pause occasionally when I'm doing it. So the first thing I'd like to do is to find SharePoint opportunities that um, that they fit in this description. So um, I already forgot what it was called. Hold on one second. I got to go in here and re remind myself of the field. Um, down here. So description of requirement. That's what I was looking for. So let me come back. By the way, sometimes uh, FPDS doesn't work the way you think. Don't worry about it. Just keep popping back and forth and it'll be fine. Um, so I'm going to add a field. I'm going to come down here and I'm looking for that description field, description of requirement. And I want it to contain SharePoint. So I want this field to have the word SharePoint compared to anything in all of PDF, FPDS to have SharePoint. So I'm going to go ahead and, and say, in this case, I'm just going to say, give me a new search. And when it does, now I've got a whole bunch of opportunities that, uh, you know, 6,000 opportunities that have SharePoint in there. Now, the next thing is I'm looking for opportunities that are expiring. So I want to filter that down one more time. You can filter down a lot, but I'm just going to show you two today. Um, the next thing is the estimated, where is it? Right here, estimated completion date. So I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to click on the calendar icon. And for me, I like going to the next fiscal year. So I am saying... I want to see the opportunities that are going to that going to expire on October 1st, 2023, which is fiscal year 2024. So they're expiring that date and beyond. And I'll tell you why in a second. Um, let me just get the other filter in place. So I'm going to change the month to October again and the um, date to the first. And so now I got this two year window because I'm trying to fill my pipeline two years out. I'm looking for opportunities that are expiring. So they're in my pipeline. I can begin to pursue them. The reason I'm not using FPDS at the moment to pursue opportunities before no, uh, October 2023 is because I should have done that a long time ago and it's too rushed. So between now and the end of this fiscal year, I've got other ways to find opportunities. But if you start today looking at opportunities that are expiring, you will be able to get into this rhythm where every single year you've got expiring opportunities. I'm just not doing it in the first nine months of my starting this example. Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and say search. And what it did now is filtered 6,000 results down to 279. I don't know if you noticed that, but right here where my mouse is, um, there was 6,600 opportunities. Now there's 279, which is awesome. It's the next step. It's my ability to look at it. One other tip I want to show you is I'm going to control A and control C this. So I'm copying this, um, this language for the search. So I don't have to keep hitting the advanced button. Let me come back here and I just want to show you um, when I find a good search that works for my company or the company I'm supporting, then I'll save that search. So I don't have to keep going in and hitting those filters. As I move forward, I probably will have more advanced filters. And so you might consider saving a um, saving some of your searches in this language. So then you just copy the language and put it in whenever you come back to FPDS and you can do things like just change the dates in here and then cut and paste. So that's just a quick little tip there. Um, okay, so I found the results. Let me just pause and come back here. I filtered all those results that are in FPDS down to 6,000, then I filtered it down to 279. That's enough filtering for the moment. You can do more filtering on your own, come in and really become an expert at this tool. The next thing I wanna show you is before I do anything else, I just browse through here and, and try to get an understanding of what am I seeing. So an example is, 
if you look on, and let me see if I can zoom in here. Stick with me one second. So I zoomed in and they got a horrible zoom. Maybe that's good enough right there. But I zoomed in. One of the first things I look at is the departments or are the departments, right? And I can see here that HHS has got a ton of opportunities that say uh, SharePoint, but Department of Agriculture, for example, only has 10. What that tells me, because I know that SharePoint is everywhere, what that tells me is that SharePoint at the Department of Agriculture is probably woven in to a, a different type of contract. Um, if you don't know this, and let me see if I can open it. Nah, it didn't let me do that. Um, if you don't know this, if you come in and look at an opportunity inside of FPDS, down here in the description field, description of requirements, see that says SharePoint support services? That's exactly what I want, right? But that's a teeny, uh, that's like three words. I mean, it literally is three words. But if I went into SAM, for example, I could, I could find whole PWSs. So a different training, I'll show you how to find um, the same type of opportunities, but now digging into SAM, which has a lot more depth of its research. Um, by the way, this is what I meant by sometimes you, you do something in FPDS, I can't go back. Everything I just did is gone, which drives me nuts, right? Until I sit there and solve the problem by coming back here. And now I can just put it in here. Um, boop, home, I'm gonna delete that, hit enter. And now I got my 279 results. So I didn't have to go through all those filters again. That's why I like cutting and pasting it. So um, I was showing you on the left-hand side though, I can look here and see, well, if I'm trying to decide who's doing a who's doing SharePoint, who's got a lot of opportunities, I can begin to pursue it. If, you've, if you're focusing on a particular agency, you can literally just click on HHS as an example and say, now I just want to come into HHS and look at their 88 opportunities because HHS is my primary target. Let's just go in there. Um, and I can see in HHS which commands or which subordinate agencies are um, doing this, uh, uh, you know, have contracts for SharePoint. So I can see right here, NIH and CDC have 30 each. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go figure out who they are. And this is a good uh, spot for me to stop and show you the third thing I wanted to talk about, right, is... Let me come back here. So you filter the data, then I perform a basic review. I'm just seeing what's there. I decided to go deeper into HHS. And so what now I want to just go in here and hit um, the CSV button. When you click that, you'll be able to export this data. So I can save it, which I would have done. But in this case, I'm just going to hit open. And um, that'll come back with the results for me in a split second. There you go. And what I want to show you next in a, in a second is how to analyze some of this data. Before I do, though, do me a favor, put research into the chat, into the comments. Let me know you understand that the getting the results is coming from that first step of the seven step process to success that we teach. Research. Research is the first thing. Next thing we're going to do is analyze the results. And so the first step I'm going to do is prepare that CSV. So you get this CSV. It's a lot of stuff. Here's how I prepare stuff. And I encourage you to do it uh, similarly. Um, I, I teach that what you do over and over again is a habit. What you do once in a while is not, right? So um, I like clean spreadsheets. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is come up every single time because I might save this, somebody else might use it. So I want to go through the format. I just changed it to bold. I changed the color. I'm going to come up here to view over here on the freeze pane. I'm going to say freeze the top row. Now, when I scroll down, I always have my header visible, right? And the last thing I'm going to do, so I'm just going to click in the first tab. And I'm going to go back to my home tab, however you do this on your spreadsheet tools. But I'm going to come here and say filter. Now what I've done is turned it so I can go to this NAICS field and I can say, just show me 54511 or you know what I'm saying, right? And now I can see stuff. So in two seconds, I made this sheet my own. The last thing I will do, let me get rid of this filter. The last thing I like doing is um, I highlight it all. And then if you haven't done this between A and B, there's a line and you see the two arrows. If I double click on a, on a Windows machine, if I double click, it makes the columns all fit the width of the characters that are in there, which just makes it easier for you to read and see. Now I can start looking at the data. Um, and so let me just pause for a second just to see where I'm at. So that was preparing the CSV data, right? Now I'm going to review it and pick my favorites. This is going to be a little harder because I only chose 88 opportunities. If I had a lot more, I'd be able to pick a lot more favorites. But what I want to do is I want to come in and start seeing the data in certain ways. And so first thing I like to do, because I'm, you know, I like bigger contracts. It's easy. 
it's just as hard to win a million dollar contract as a hundred thousand dollar contract. So I like starting at the top and seeing if I can play there. Um, but so here I'm just sorting it to see what I can see. And what I can see is there's not that many opportunities. Like right here, you can see that there's 15 opportunities um, that show you, I mean, that are over a million dollars, right? The other ones are great. They're task orders. So they, they might be shorter window, whatever it is. Um, but this ability to see it. Um, so that's one thing I like looking at. The next thing I'm looking for is, um, you know, as I come over, I'm trying to understand just a general understanding of how these were, were awarded. So I can see that um, there's two that were done at FDA on a BPA. So I might want to try to figure out what is that BPA? Can I get on that BPA? Is it expiring? You know, what are the details? I don't know anything about it. Um, and by the way, I don't ever claim to know everything. You can't know everything. So like right here, I see DCA definitive contract. I don't know what DCA is because it's just slipping my mind. Somebody might put it in the chat and go, oh, DCA is this. Um, but I can see that there's these definitive contracts and then there's delivery orders as you go down. So my ability to just understand how are these SharePoint opportunities being awarded? Um, something like this is a big flag for me. Let me let me reverse this. Hold on. So if I say smallest to, to largest, this thing is really cool to me because this is money going back in, right? I don't know the details, but when I see red, especially as it relates to a SharePoint opportunity, I might go dig a little further to find out why, right? And so this is me analyzing the data. One other thing, um, as I come over, I talked about, you know, you can look at the different agencies that were here. Most of them were uh, CDC and CMS. Um, and then uh, you can sort the NAICs. I generally don't care about those. I told you, I don't really care about those because uh, they're just so subjective. But the part I really, the last thing I'm really looking for is um, if I sort the, the legal business name or the ultimate whatever, I'm looking here to try to figure out who's winning and can I build a relationship with them if I'm a, a business trying to be a subcontractor or as you'll see in a minute, I'll talk about going after stuff. But this is interesting. This I can tell right away, this company and then uh, this company um, I'm, I'm guessing if I went in and looked that these would be 8A opportunities, that uh, they were set, a, set aside 8A opportunities. So I'm not going after it. Um, I mean, excuse me, I'm not going after it in today's training, but you might go after it as an 8A. But soft tech, scope, I'm like, okay, these guys are winning. I got to get in and talk to them, especially scope, um, right? I know who they are, or soft tech, excuse me. I know who they are. I might want to pursue it. But this is a quick analysis of this. And, and so what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, you know what, let's say these are my favorite or more importantly, um, if I come back and do what I said early on, let me just scroll over and I start at the uh, largest to smallest, I might say these are my favorite. Well, now my next tip. So right here, I picked the favorites. Now I'm going to go back into FPDS because I want to show you how to find some of this information. How do you find the contracting funding and program office? By the way, if you don't know the difference the program office is the person who will use SharePoint, right? One way or another. The funding office, which may or may not be the program office, is the people providing the money for this uh, requirement. And then the contracting office is the office that's just uh, doing the RFP, basically, right? And so whenever I do capture, I always tell capture managers, you must tell me who's the con what is the contract office, what is the funding office, and what is the program office. I'm okay if they're all three the same. You just need to know them because if you don't know them, then how will you be able to find people to pursue to ask questions? So um, so anyways, I want to find this information. I want to find out who the government point of contact is, uh, the contract vehicle used, and then the incumbent. And we'll come back to that. By the way, if you're tracking on that, put targeting into, into the chat because that's exactly what we're doing here. So I exported the results to Excel. I was looking at it and now I'm coming back in here and I said, I have some favorites. And so I'm gonna show you how I sort this in a way that shows me those favorites. Um, it's, it's basically called action obligation right here. So you see how I got zero at the top. What I'm really looking for is the biggest ones. And so I'm saying sort by descending, that's the highest to the lowest in this case of action obligations. So tell me how much money from the biggest one to the lowest. And so when I saw it, there's my $7 million opportunity. Now I wanna be able to go in here and find this. Um, and hold on one second, let me see if I can duplicate this tab. So I don't, uh, there you go, good. Cause I don't want it to wreck it on me. On me. Okay, this will let me go back, but um, okay. So here's in this opportunity. First thing I'm looking for is a point, government point of contact because it's at the top. 
And in here, I got none. I'm like, ah, all right. So most times you'll find somebody. Sometimes you won't. But right here, I can see it says um, HHS, Y. Gill, and T. Freeman. And I got a feeling that if I went and just took that into Google, I could find somebody by just separating it out saying T. Freeman, HHS, and I might find it. Um, also, though, I could go over to Sam and I could find this opportunity and begin to pursue that person uh, farther by using these numbers in the document information section. Um, but so I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you in a second. That's who I was looking for there. The other thing is, as I come down, I'm looking for um, some of the other key pieces of information that are in here. So I talked about the funding office, the funding agency, and the contracting office. And so here you can see CD or CMS, uh, CMS is the one who um, managed this RFP, this contract, out of their acquisition and grants management office. And you can see they're the same office for funding. This doesn't tell me, by the way, in FPDS who the program office is. In order for me to find that out, I would dig further into the RFP uh, material, the PWS, whatever, where it will tell me who's using this. But I got a really good feeling it's not these guys. It's not the uh, acquisition and grants management office. Um, and so as I'm coming down, the next thing is I want to find the uh, information about the, um, the incumbent. So let me just help you track. So the contract funding program offices, the government POC and the in the incumbent. And so here I'm able to find their information. And from this, I can go look at them on uh, in further in FBDS and USA spending. But more importantly, I can go into SAM and DSBS and find contact information. If they're a large firm, I'll go into LinkedIn and try to find a point of contact who might be selling into the um, uh, HHS as an example. And uh, But here I can see uh, you know the information about them and decide they're an 8A. Remember I said, there's a good chance that these bigger ones were 8A firm and I can track on it. Um, so this means it's a competitive one and it's coming out. Um, this is interesting. It says a major program, Agency SharePoint. I'm like, all right, let me go find it. I don't want to teach you everything about um, uh, FPDS. I'm just showing you as you come down, you can keep seeing uh, these folks. And um, as you can come down, I'm trying to find, I, I can't remember or see where it's at here, but I'm trying to look at it. Okay, so here it's 8A competed. What I was looking for is for it to say it was on STARS 3, um, where it was at happened. But here it talks about um, the vehicle. So when you look in this area under competition details, you can find that information. Um, I'm going to pause because I'm running out of time, but you can click into different opportunities. Let me come down a little bit and just try one more. If I click into this opportunity, now it's still the same stuff. But generally, I wanted to talk about the government point of contact. Generally, you can find them up there. Um, so let me go ahead and pause. And I'm going to come back uh, here. And I want to talk to you about how to pursue the opportunities really quick. And, and from this perspective, I just want to tell you what I do in the last few minutes to pursue opportunities, right? So um, I just gathered the information about an opportunity that I like. And I, and I look at it and I go, oh, that 8A firm, I think it's scope, but I can't remember. Um, that 8A firm is the one who uh, went after it and won it last year. And so I'm going to go find that government point of contact and I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to um, reach out and I'm going to start learning information. The first thing I'm going to learn is, are you still there? The second thing I'm going to learn is, um, is this, is this going to be recompeted? Because I'm finding it from an expired contract. I want to find out if, is it being recompeted? Re if it is, are you, are you the contracting officer, somebody else um, who's tracking on it? And, um, you, you know, you're just trying to find information. If I know that it's CMS, I'm going to go find a small business specialist. I'm going to reach out and say, hey, there's a contract that expires um, in October. I'm not really finding any information out on the Internet. You need to make sure you do your research first. But can you help me find out um, who's the contracting officer or contracting specialist and whether it's being recompeted, which I'm pretty sure it is because it's SharePoint support. So those are the things you want to do when you're talking to a buyer. This, the next thing you want to do as it relates to an opportunity you find that it is going to expire is you want to research that incumbent like scope, right? I'm just using a random company there, but you want to research them, begin to learn about where are they making their money? Um, what type of services? Are they all SharePoint or is, is this a one-off contract? So research them a little bit in USA Spending and FPDS and on their website and LinkedIn, et cetera. And then reach out and talk to them. You know, if it's a small enough company, you're talking to the owner. Otherwise, you might be reaching out to a, a civilian agency business developer, um, somebody like that, right? You can reach out to them and say, hey, I'm interested in this. Are you guys recompeting? Is there room for 
for me to get on your team, whatever it is, you start having conversations. There's a whole training around capture, right? But reach out to the incumbent early and begin to find out. And then the uh, third thing you want to do is to, um, and this is just the first three suggestions I have is go onto LinkedIn and go into the internet and see if you can find that incumbent's staff. Go find out um, what they're doing. Maybe they're sharing information out and talking about uh, what they do, or maybe they gave a thumbs up to somebody who's inside the agency who posted something about an award, whatever it is, you, this is called incumbent capture, right? Capture management is not about waiting for an RFP to drop and then telling the proposal folks what's in GovWin. Capture management is a verb, it's work, it's activity. And some of that work is reaching out to the government um, buyer, it's reaching out to the incumbent and understanding and researching them. And it's um, trying to do incumbent capture or um, uh, you know uh, recruiting their staff. And you wanna start that early, right? Early and often. So, okay, so um, if that makes sense, again, put capture into the chat. As a recap, we covered today in the training how to use FPDS to find what I call unqualified opportunities. They look good, but I haven't qualified them yet. Now, how to analyze, the second thing was how to analyze those opportunities to find ones that are worth pursuing. In my pipeline, they're still unqualified, but they look good. And so I wanna do some initial outreach, which is the third thing we talked about, initial steps to qualify and then pursue opportunities. This is you putting stuff into the pipeline. This is sales, right? This is business development and capture, but it's all encompassing under sales. Um, so my tip for you, what I want you to do from this training is tomorrow, Have I mean, today schedule an hour for tomorrow for you to go into FPDS and practice what I taught you today. Go see if you can find some slam dunk opportunities that you wish you could have won four years ago that are gonna be recompeted one year from now. Now you don't have to wait for somebody else to tell you about opportunities. You can go find the ones you wish you won that are about to be recompeted. Hey, I'm releasing a new version of my business development um, fundamentals course, and that's coming out in the next week or two. If you're interested in learning more and you wanna be notified about it, go to neilmcdonald.com and just put your name in there so I can let you know when it comes out. And then remember, government contracting, it is not a secret, it's just a process. Part of the process is skills like the ones we learned today. I will see you in the next training.